over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell Coast to Coast in the biggest way possible right here on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have you with us on a Wednesday. Carver High in for Scotty. Go for the two. Joe Lisi joins me momentarily. A very busy Wednesday. Very busy golf Wednesday on Coast to Coast as, of course, tomorrow. I mean, it's like for golf fans and golf betters like myself, it is like Christmas Eve. Uh, with the Masters uh, teeing off in Augusta. Could be some weather tomorrow. That's a problem. Uh, but we, of course, will have you covered uh, pillar to post on the Masters. We've got a lot of afternoon baseball. We've got baseball tonight. We've got NBA tonight. We have a very, very busy slate uh, to get to today on C2C. We start, as always, with the birthday roll call. Let's go. Who do we got today? Corey Kluber, 38. Dion Phaneuf, 38. Andre Ethier, 40. Uh, Sean Avery, 44. Steve Washburn, 48. Sean Gilbert, 54. Uh, Enrico Ciccone, 54. How about that? Kay Whitmore Jr., 57. Neil Smith, 58. Mike Devereaux, 61. Steve Tasker, legend, 62. Ken Griffey Sr., 74. Mel Blount. Scotty's legend. He loves him. Steelers, uh, 76. And Don Meredith, 86 uh, here today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. All right. We do have uh, several games going on this afternoon around Major League Baseball. Two underway and a few more that are going to start momentarily and within the hour. Uh, the Dodgers and the Twins are finishing up their series in Minnesota. I did see a couple of home runs. Uh, from Eduardo Julian, of all people, uh, for the Minnesota Twins. So they have themselves a 3-2 lead over the Dodgers right now. We welcome in all of our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast on a Wednesday. Carver High in for Scotty. Joe joins me momentarily on Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM. Channel 159, Sports Byline, the mightier. 1090 ESPN Radio in sunny Southern California. Great to have everybody with us here today. Also, Phillies and Cardinals. In St. Louis, uh, they are in the top of the six there, tied at twos. Uh, Donovan with a homer for St. Louis to get that even a couple of innings ago. Uh, so Nola going for the Phillies today, Lynn going for the Cardinals. We have Mariners and Blue Jays starting in about eh, two or three minutes. You have the Diamondbacks and the Rockies also starting in about five minutes out in Colorado. Nationals and Giants later this hour, Rays and Angels at the top of the next hour. So lots of day ball uh, that we will get to today on C2C. Gabe Morenci is with us every day on Coast to Coast. We will talk to him as well. I've got a couple of things from last night uh, that I want to discuss in baseball too. And then a full slate tonight. So good, good balance here between the afternoon and the night games. The Yankees will look for the sweep at the stadium against the Marlins, who just cannot uh, get out of their own way so far this year uh, and it doesn't help them that they had to go into the Bronx with the Yankees playing very well Cubs and Padres have had a fun couple days they'll finish that off in San Diego uh, the Orioles are in Boston tonight and the Orioles uh, calling up top prospect Jackson Holiday uh, here last night so they get him in the mix that Oriole lineup just full of homegrown talent and of course to celebrate that call up uh, we're probably going to go after Holiday tonight uh, hopefully he better be in the lineup I think he was plus 630 uh, to Homer tonight. So we got to add Jackson Holiday to the tater time. I mean, they get the kid in the lineup at Fenway, and let's roll, baby. Uh, we also have the Mets in Atlanta again, uh, Houston, Kansas City, Oakland, who beat Texas last night uh, with Shea Langliers uh, hitting three home runs. Uh, so a big night for him as well. Hour number two, we will start Golf Wednesday on C2C. And it's a special one. It's bigger than most because the Masters – is here in Augusta, uh, and we will do what we always do. Cam Stewart will join us first. Uh, we will do uh, the outrights, the top 10s, 20s, and 40s, the first-round leader bombs. Yes, we were able to find a few, even with uh, only 80-some-odd golf golfers in the field this week. We do have a couple of first-round leader bombs that we're going to go after. 
Cam actually a little extended stay with me today. He's going to be on at the top of the hour, and he'll be in there for the first couple segments. So uh, we'll go a little bit deeper than normal. Why? Because it's a major. It's the Masters. We're going to go pillar to post with this. And I and look, the one thing you love about the Masters also is it brings in the casual fan. Maybe you're not watching golf all year round. Maybe you're not betting golf all year round. But the Masters is something that draws you in. Uh, there's just something about it, a tradition unlike any other. The Azaleas, Magnolia Road, the stories, uh, you know, the tradition, all of those things. Uh, and we've got all the heavy hitters lined up this week. Uh, we've got a lot of enticing storylines. Can Rory finally do it? You have Scotty Scheffler, who's been dominating everybody. Ron Back is the defending champ. First time he's playing with all these guys this year since he jumped to live. You've got some guys further down the board. Some of the prices this week, really wild to me. And it's because everybody's just swallowing up all this Scheffler 4-1 to one money. That to see guys like Victor Hovland at 35, Wyndham Clark at 40, you know, Willie Z at 40, 45, Patrick Cantley at 40. I mean, I mean, I wasn't looking to bet Patrick Cantley at the Masters this week, but I mean, 40, 45 to 1 on him. I mean, I'd take a little bit of a flyer. Uh, so we will do all that. Uh, started off with Cam. Coach Young is with us every day on the Lions Share in our number two. We will go through tonight's NBA plays with him. We have Davis Maddock in our number two as well. He wants to uh, jump right in on Golf Wednesday as well, so he's got some plays for us there too. Final hour of Coast to Coast. Uh, NBA, only a few days left in the regular season. Uh, some critical games last night in terms of the seeding. Bucks get themselves a win over the Celtics, but at a cost uh, as Giannis left that game with the calf strain. Who knows what's going to happen with him? They've got a couple games with Orlando this week who's breathing down their neck. The Knicks with the wind breathing down their neck. That's a critical injury for Milwaukee, uh, especially when you consider these last few days could drop them as low as fourth or fifth in the East uh, and to potentially not have him, uh, not a good scene for them. Like we said, the Knicks did win. Uh, Orlando lost in Houston uh, to the Rockets. So they're playing again tonight. We will discuss and that race for the top seed in the West. Nobody uh, drew any blood last night as the Thunder, the Nuggets and the Timberwolves all won, but somebody's going to lose tonight because the Nuggets and the Timberwolves are getting together uh, in a very big game. So we will go through the NBA slate as well. Uh, we do have a couple of visits to Augusta in hour number three as well. Rick Harrow, our sports business and legal insider. He is at Augusta, and he also better have my hat from the concession stand uh, that he has promised me. And Keith Stewart from Read the Line, who's with us every week here on Coast to Coast, will be in Augusta as well. So we will get all of the plays from Keith and get his thoughts on the course, etc., as we get ready for tee off tomorrow morning. I've even got hockey uh, for you, uh, especially last night. The East getting a little clearer, a week left in the regular season there. Uh, Islanders beating the Rangers last night. Big win, a lot of crying from Peter Laviolette after the game. Calm down, honestly. Uh, and a big deal in the NFL, Jaguars give Josh Allen uh, five years and $150 million. He was franchise tagged, of course. So a very busy Wednesday on Pharrell Coast to Coast. We'll come back and get it going. Carver High, Joe Lisi, we're back on the grid right after this. fact that I've been able to uh, move to a, a home that I'm very excited about is uh, it, it's, it's really cool and uh, so far just love everybody that I've met at Sports Grid and I'm just super pumped for the opportunity. Sometimes things that I wouldn't feel comfortable asking, uh, whether it was me playing and just trying to get a tidbit on the golf course and certain thing a player might have learned, now I'm getting that information because I, I don't mind asking it. Only on Sports Grid.
There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Jason Team has games where he has stinkers. He shoots a 4 for 16. Jalen Brown in the playoffs gets exposed because he can't go left. Porzingis gets old. Sometimes Drew Holiday's not consistent. Al Horford father talks to catch up. That being said, I still think they're going to the NBA Finals and winning it. And I'm a Knicks fan. I hate the Celtics with all of my might. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Memphis owns it. They beat him five straight times, and Memphis is awful. So what does that say about the Bucs? They are the most overrated team in the NBA, hands down. Michigan and Boston College, there's going to be goals scored in this game. But... Without being stated, the total's up to seven and a half right now. I got to go under seven and a half here, Scott. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. sort of has letdown written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Dude, did you know BetMGM has responsible gambling tools so you don't get carried away? I never get carried away. Well, there were the bobbleheads. And the playoff beer. Chili's ready! Well, those tools could really help. Don't forget about the backyard rink. Yeah, these tools are pretty great. BetMGM is committed to making gambling safe and fun with responsible gambling tools so you don't get carried away. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Pharrell has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Stakes, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High in for Scotty. We'll get Joe in here in a moment. But first, uh, BetMGM is doing it again. This time in North Carolina. They're giving away free money, uh, which they love doing, and they're doing it again. Uh, what do we have to do? All right. Well, let's download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit at least $5 into your newly created account in North Carolina. Place a wager in the amount of at least $5 at standard odds price. Once you have placed a bet, you will receive $150 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager, win or lose. You need to use bonus code GRID. That is bonus code G-R-I-D. BetMGM, giving away free money in North Carolina. Go and get involved. Of course, every Tuesday and Wednesday, you get the extended version. The very popular, I would say, I think it's very popular, uh, Sports Grid radio show, Carver and Lisi, which airs weeknights at 8 p.m. East, and that is with myself and the encyclopedia of, we'll still say college football, the draft's two weeks away, he's getting very excited for that, the one, the only, go for the two, Joe Lisi, hi Joe, how you doing? 
Hi, Carver. They're going to be calling me the Encyclopedia of the Masters after this week, after I crush it on week on round one and two. That Yes, Sepp Straka, Tiger, yes. Cam Anyone Davis. Anyone else, Joe? Anyone Cam else? Davis. Cam Davis. We're going to throw Cam Pete, Davis in there, Pete too? Pete Malnati. Uh, Pete Malnati. Pete Malnati with the art, with the bucket hat and the, and the glowing uh, yellow ball. We're going to go with Peter Malnati, too, huh? 110 to 1 first round leader, Joe. Not bad. Gotta get it uh, out there. Get Gotta it get it out there. there. Put the vibes oh, well, you out get a, there. You get a chance. I know it's Golf Wednesday, and we got a lot of guys. We obviously got our, our big golf guys on the day, but you get involved, Joe. I mean, you've had, you've been close this year, uh, whether it's Skins or Nikki Dunlap or a couple of these guys. You, you've had some opportunities this year. Carver. Yeah, nothing gets me. Nothing gets me more excited than the azaleas. I mean, seriously, I'm gonna be I wearing. Know. Next time you see me, I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna have the green jacket on for for the Masters. Well, it's the it's calm gonna, before the storm, before the NFL it's gonna draft. Probably, so it's gonna probably um, fire you up tonight because it's like tonight's like Christmas Eve for me, Joe. So when we're doing the radio show tonight, I'm gonna be very excited. Uh, about the Masters, it's all I'm really probably going to want to talk about. It's going to bother you. You're going to be ah, come on, talk about something else. You're going to get all fired up uh, about Augusta. So that's okay, though, Joe. We're going to have Haro from Augusta on the radio show today, oh. too. Uh, well, so we... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe he'll get you a hat also, Joe. I'm going to ask him to get you a hat uh, if, we, if we could somehow do that. Uh, we have baseball, Joe, this afternoon uh going on several games uh on the day side the twins still lead the dodgers 3-2 they're going to the eighth in minnesota the phillies have just taken a 4-2 to two lead over the cardinals rbi singles from marsh and castellanos have put them up 4-2 bottom of the sixth in uh st louis they are underway joe in toronto for the mariners and the blue jays so you did have what's eating gilbert grape and Kikuchi on the mound uh, this afternoon for the Jays, Joe. Do you have anything going on with the Jays and the Mariners here? Jays are minus 120 right now. Mariners minus 105 with a 7.5 total as they are now uh, a couple of outs into that game. No, I, I would lean to the Jays, though. I was on them last night. They stepped up. I laid the 122 right around, I think, the first inning, and they, they, blew, they won that game, what, 5-3? So uh, yeah. that completed the second leg of a parlay last night. But I like the Blue Jays. I told you. Big picture, I think they're going to challenge for the AL East. We need Vlad to get going. Big, bad Vlad. Can he hit one today? Can he hit one? Uh, I got to tell you, Joe, I'm on him uh, to hit one. I hope that he does. Uh, I have him. And basically every home run play today uh, is, li- is linked to Scotty Shefford to win the Masters. Uh, this is like a special today. You took every the home chalk run- with this guy. Every- Come on. No, 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 no. You're not understanding. You're not getting it. This is not taking the chalk. I would never play Scotty Scheffler at plus 400 or plus 450. What I'm doing, Joe, is, is that I'm taking some home run plays, putting them with him, and if the home runs hit, I got a bunch of uh, backup shuffler tickets if he happens to go and win the Masters this week. That's what we're doing, Joe. We're covering ourselves against the heavy favorite. That's what we're doing. We're having a little bit of cover against the heavy favorite. There's nothing wrong with that, Joe. Glad to have that. It's covering your bases, making sure you got all the angles, Joe. That's what we're doing here. Put it with the golf. Everybody loves this guy, Shuffler. Everybody's playing great. He's the best this year. Yeah, Scotty Scheffler. It's like UConn. Trust this is me, a, yeah, this is it. It's the best. Joe, you know, bar none. There's about there's about twelve guys that I would much rather win the Masters this week uh, than Scotty Scheffler. There's about twelve. I'm of telling them. you this right and now. I, have... I just tell you, I hope a total <laughs> yeah. hack wins it. I hope somebody that you know, not a total hack. 600 to 1. Maybe Freddie Couples, they scrape off scrape off the dirt from Freddie Couples back in the day, and he, he shoots an amazing happen, four rounds. I don't think that's going to happen. In fact, I'll tell you that Freddie's got no shot. <laughs> no shot uh, this week. He's got no shot. Uh, the Diamondbacks are already off and running in Colorado. Colorado against the Rockies this afternoon uh, as Gurriel just singled home a run. So one nothing. They're still in the first. They have runners in the corners here, uh, as you had Gomber, who's a total gas can, on the mound for Colorado, and he's already giving up runs. On the Arizona side of things, Joe, uh, they have Henry going today 
uh, Tommy Henry. So that I think that was 12 and a half, Joe, uh, when it closed. I'm pretty sure. Uh, 11, uh, 10 and a half, actually, they have here. But we saw last, didn't we see 11 and a half or 12 last night, Joe, when we were looking mm-hmm. at that game for Arizona yeah. and Colorado? Yeah. yeah. I think they'll be was- runs this afternoon. Yeah, that game, they scored, actually. I think they had uh, four runs in the first two innings last night, and it was a dead under. It was 3-2. Yeah. I, I actually altered that. I got smashed. But, you know, I, I told you, uh, tonight, today, White Sox again, and then over the weekend, I'm going to be bottoming out with the Marlins against the Braves, and then I think we go over in the Rocky games after today on, the rest of the week. Have the rest of the week, you're going to go over in the Rocky games. Uh, the Nationals and the Giants will finish their series in San Francisco coming up in about eh, about 20 minutes, Joe. The Nationals did beat them last night. 5-3 stayed under the 8.5, Joe. Wasn't it 8.5 yeah. last night? So they just scraped yeah. with that under. Uh, this afternoon, you're going to have Patrick Corbin going up against Jordan Hicks. Uh, right now, you have minus two bills. For the mm. Giants, they're minus 200 with the Nationals sitting at plus 165. That total, 8.5. Uh, so you got an 8.5 again here, Joe. 7.5 was opening night. You, you got over that. Last night they had a flat 8. Uh, now tonight, an 8.5. Uh, I think tonight we go over again. I mean, this could be a series where maybe two of the three games we trend over. Would we have nine runs on Monday? So let, let's go over tonight, Carver. Uh, let's go over tonight, that, which actually does start, as I said, in about 20 minutes. Uh, they'll start in San Francisco with that one. Uh, I do have another game that starts, Joe. I'll give that to you in a little bit, which is the Rays and the Angels. I got a ton of action tonight. You said the White Sox are going to be on. I'll let you know who's starting and what the numbers are there. We will come back, though, uh, in our daily chat with Gabe Morenci, Sports Rage Late Night here on the grid. We will come back and get that rolling. Pharrell, coast to coast on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty. Sports Grid, Sports Grid Radio. We're back after this. Pretty much cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had the Wolfpack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The fact that I've been able to uh, move to a, a home that I'm very excited about is uh, it, it's, it's really cool. And uh, so far, I just love everybody that I've met at Sports Grid, and I'm just super pumped for the opportunity. Sometimes things that I wouldn't feel comfortable asking, uh, whether it was me playing and just trying to get a tidbit on the golf course and certain thing a player might have learned, now I'm getting that information because I, I don't mind asking it. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted, but here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York team has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in 
on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. And we are back trail coast to coast on a Wednesday. Carver High in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. Of course, every day we have Gabe Morenci with a sports rage late night, weeknights, 10 p.m. East, right here on the grid. Uh, Gabe, good to see you as always, my man. Uh, we have uh, a lot going on again tonight. Uh, we've got some Bay baseball, we've got uh, hockey, NBA. Uh, it is all happening here. I want to actually uh, bring this up with you first, because since me and you are hockey guys uh, and we uh, were very involved in this stuff, this news just came down uh, that Arizona may be moving uh, to Salt Lake City, uh, Gabe. This was the uh, word that just came through. This is from Frank Saravalli. Uh, NHL, Arizona Coyotes, and the Smith Entertainment Group have made significant progress on the framework of an agreement to relocate the Coyotes to Salt Lake City starting next year. They're apparently making two separate schedules, one in Arizona, one in Salt Lake City. Now, he does say here uh, this is not done. There's many layers and many lawyers uh, still to go, much work to do. But it sounds like, Gabe, the people in Salt Lake City who wanted their hockey team uh, are going to maybe be getting it sooner rather than later. It sounds like the, uh, the final nail in the coffin was the mayor of Scottsdale earlier in the week shutting down any potential – coyotes project in which he stated you want to build an entertainment complex and casinos in the disguise of a hockey arena (laughs) right so that was basically they were rejected by glendale where the coyotes play they were rejected by scottsdale where all the money's at and all the kids are at they were rejected by tempe uh, where the university of arizona is it's never good when local politicians normally politicians will roll over for sports teams Politicians want no part of it, and it's not just an arena that they're looking to build. He always wants a bunch of land along, well, we can't survive unless we do this and that. Gary Bettman was the one. Listen, we'll give credit to to Bettman in a sense that he's put a lot of teams in non-traditional hockey markets, and it's worked, right? A lot of people rolled their eyes at Las Vegas, bro, and it's been a smash success. Um, You look at Seattle. Like, you look at a lot of the expansion, Tampa, um, you know, Carolina, a lot of places have been very successful. Arizona just hasn't been, just point blank for whatever reason. And it's too bad. One thing Carver is really dumb about this is when they built the arena, now called the Footprint Center, or whatever the hell it's called, but when they built the arena downtown in Phoenix, why didn't they think, that, you know what, maybe we should not make this just basketball only? Like, basically, there's not enough room because you think, why don't they just play where the Phoenix Sun play? Like, how hard is this? There's not enough room. It's almost like the Barkley Center. Yeah. It wasn't made for hockey. They, it's like, okay, if we take these seats out, it still doesn't work. There's not, The angles are no good. There's no room. It doesn't work, and we're not smashing down the arena for the damn hockey team. And also, the Phoenix Suns were kind of more like, build your own arena, man. Right? We're building our arena. Like, build your own arena. So, long story short, The fact of the matter is, I saw like two days ago, and this is, it's no secret, man. The owner of the Utah Jazz, he's an up-and-comer, Carver. Uh, Utah is a big hub right now, bro. Like, yeah, Salt Lake City is a big tech hub. It's a big business hub. It's actually one of the fastest-growing cities in America and states in America uh, right now. They're getting the Olympics back. 
And this guy's got a lot of money. He's a young tech guy, went to BYU. He owns the Utah Jazz. And he wants to bring hockey there now, too. And he wants to bring entertainment there. Like, he took offense when Barkley and Shaq said there's nothing to do there. And said, we're trying, you know, we're, 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 we're trying to build something here. And also, Gary Bettman is a very cautious man, all right? Like, he's gone, like, years and years with his Arizona stuff. He's finally out of room now. He's out of racetrack. He realizes it's over. And the fact that the owner of the Utah Jazz put a poll up two days ago, Carver, what should we call a hockey team if he put, like, in a little quote, if, he goes, if we're lucky enough to get a team, what should we call them? And I'm thinking, Gary Bettman, that's the type of stuff that Gary would be on the phone. Like, you're not getting the team. Like, we never told you you're getting a team. Like, you don't go ahead and start telling people this. No, 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 no. He knows. It's a done deal. They're going to Salt Lake. So the fact is, I don't know, Salt Lake Coyotes actually sounds all right, but it sounds like they want their own name. Um, Yeti well, seems to be the front runner. <laughs> I, I think they should go back to what they used in the old AHL days when they'd be the Grizzlies. I mean, weren't they were the Utah Grizzlies when they were in the AHL. I kind of like that. I, I think that's where, uh, where they should land uh, with a nickname. But you're right. It'll be something. Uh, it's everybody's got to get a little something off the wall now, a little something zany. Uh, you can't do anything simple. Uh, we got to sell jerseys, we, right? Got to like sell Grizzlies, jerseys. Grizzlies is cool, Grizz- but it's not that. It's <laughs> it's like, doesn't, doesn't let's put a it. snowman, like a bomb little snowman yeah, Yeti on the jersey. The Yeti, you know, you know, the Yeti like, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, um, there is uh, not many NHL games tonight, Gabe, but there's significance here with this Pacific division uh, because Vancouver's trying to close this thing out with four games to play. They're playing uh, the soon-to-be, I guess, uh, Salt Lake City (laughs) Yetis uh, in the Arizona Coyotes. But Edmonton and Vegas are also playing tonight, and Edmonton is the team game that is breathing down Vancouver's neck here with now just five points. Yeah, you know what, though? It's it's early in the day, so I don't know if they've confirmed it yet as far as McDavid. He's not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think he's playing. The game's a yeah. pick 'em right now. Would they be a pick 'em if he was playing? No. No. The Oilers no. would be favored. I don't think McDavid's playing, which goes to show Carver what the Oilers are thinking about this first place thing. Right? They're still behind, and you're right. It's a big night tonight. The Coyotes and and, and the Canucks tonight. The Canucks can almost just finish this thing off. It wouldn't mathematically be done, but Edmonton would be like, yeah, dude, like. It's done. Like, it's done. Like, Vancouver would have to collapse. Even if they lose an overtime, they get a point in these games. And the fact is, Connor McDavid's not 100% uh, point blank. And they said, like, we're not the biggest concern is having this guy healthy. And I got to be honest, Carver, does it really freaking matter in this division? It's like, whatever, dude. You're playing the Vegas Golden Knights. You're playing the Kings. You're playing, like, the Oilers. Like, it's all, they're all tough. They're all the same. The Canucks are basically going to end up getting the Predators or the Kings, I think, uh, when it's all said and done. I think the Canucks, listen, big game for the Canucks tonight. They're going to wrap it up. They're going to handle their business tonight. And what you and I talked about, I know you're already putting together your your Scheffler parlays. I am. I've got one here, and I think I'll do a Canucks Scheffler one, too. I'll do a Canucks Scheffler (laughs) one just to get it, you know, bump it up a little bit. Jackson well, Holiday not... plus six thirty to Homer tonight, Gabe, in his debut with Scheffler. Bump it up to thirty to one uh, for Can... Scheffler to win. Then, okay, let me see <laughs> Scheffler to win and the Canucks to win. I'm going to do this one. Canucks. I'm going to do the Canucks in a couple of ones tonight, Carver. I'll get it to in a second. Yeah. I got like football ones too with the Canucks. All right, so Scheffler to win in the Canucks plus five ninety two. All okay. right, gives you some. Bad. Listen, and you build a couple of those, Gabe. If you get yeah, four yeah, yeah, or five yeah, yeah. of those. You, you put a hundred on that, five. you got six ninety two coming yeah, back. You put another on a hundred, suddenly you got thirteen hundred coming back. I, then you're up to I, like, I, look at me, I got eleven hundred back for UConn for a hundred and fifty dollar right. investment. And look, that's not it's not like that's gonna make me root for Scheffler uh, the most. It's more Gabe like a like a fallback. Like I have the guys that I've bet on. I have the guys that's gonna win me big money if they win the Masters this week, and then I'll have that if Scheffler ends up blowing them away. At least I got something to land on. Uh, on Sunday because that's the most likely outcome uh, is Scheffler doing that to us. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Knoblock, Here's by a the patient way, said, one for you. Here's Go ahead. A patient Give me the patient one, for one first. Scheffler to win. 
over four and a half quarterbacks taken in the NFL draft in the first round. <laughs> Why not? Then you sit on that for two weeks. Uh, well, you the problem is draft. that one's minus 200. <laughs> now, okay. I can actually live with laying this minus 200 on this. So that's what I'm thinking, Carver. Yeah. You're all about the Masters, and I get it, and I'm going to attack this as well. I'm going to get a couple of Scheffler plays in here. I actually like Ludwig Aberg to do well this yeah, week, but I know first, guy, first time guys never win, bro. They never they win. Never win. It's a problem. Seventy eight. Never win. Was last time. Seventy eight was yeah. the last time. And before before that, nineteen thirty five, and before that, yeah. they say only three guys have won their first tournament, Carver, their first yeah. Masters appearance. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of deceptive because you're counting the first ever Masters. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I was looking it up when I was confused. They're like nineteen seventy eight. 1937, and the first one. I'm like, well, the first one, everybody was the first. So it's not like, you know what I mean? They were all nervous. They was they were like, yeah, whatever. We're playing for a peach basket and a bottle of booze here. Let's go. Right? Or whatever they were playing for. But the the it's minus 200. And, you know, so we're going to start attacking this. The NFL draft is officially two weeks away, bro. It's 15 days away now, okay? So we, it's not that crazy to have to wait for and it's minus 200 over four and a half quarterbacks taken in the first round. We know Caleb Williams. So Caleb Williams won. Jaden Daniels, two. Drake May or J.J. McCarthy are going three. Whoever doesn't go three probably ends up on the Giants at six. There's four quarterbacks taken with the first six picks in the draft this year. I do believe that Michael Panix gets taken in what I call quarterback row on a Monopoly board. 11 Minnesota, 12 Denver, 13 Raiders. I don't believe that Penix gets through that sort of gauntlet right there, and there's your five quarterbacks taken. I, I, I think, think Bo Nix could be I the guy that falls a little bit. And Nick's yeah, but, not critical of Bo Nix, but he goes in the second round maybe, and it's still good for him. But there's no way in hell Penix falls out of the first round, bro. People have fallen in love with him. Look, and I, and I think Nix is going to go too uh, in the back. And I think somebody who doesn't get one early will trade back into the back of the first round, Gabe, and maybe take him as well. All right, Gabe, we'll see you tonight. Sports Rage Late Night, 10 p.m. Let's East, go. right here on the grid. Pretty much cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had the Wolfpack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The fact that I've been able to uh, move to a, a home that I'm very excited about is uh, it, it's, it's really cool. And uh, so far, I just love everybody that I've met at Sports Grid, and I'm just super pumped for the opportunity. Sometimes things that I wouldn't feel comfortable asking, uh, whether it was me playing and just trying to get a ticket on the golf course and certain thing a player might have learned, now I'm getting that information because uh, I don't mind asking it. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted, but here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. And New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. 
This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Wednesday, Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Uh, great to have everybody with us. I, I want to get back into the baseball, Joe, but first, uh, me and Gabe are talking drafts. So, of course, Joe's, uh, Joe's ears uh, jump up uh, when he hears us talking draft. Any kind of football talk, Joe hears it. He gets excited. So then you and Gabe started talking about it. Um, Gabe loves that over four and a half quarterbacks uh, play in the first round, Joe. It, and look, I think. I've told you a bunch of times, I think they could get potentially over uh, the five and a half uh, with Bo Nix maybe going in the back of the first round. So I, I think it's a very interesting bet. That, that four and a half is minus 200 for a reason. Uh, I mean, and I, there's going to be five quarterbacks, Joe. Those five guys are at the minimum are absolutely going to go in the first round. No, I'm with you. And I agree that G- with Gabe that Pennix does get taken sooner rather than later. I can't believe that Pennix put up 4,000 yards, let his team to a national championship appearance. He's mobile, ran a 4 5 and you don't want that type of quarterback in terms of, of a top 15 assessment. I will say, and I'll continue to beat this drum, I think the one overrated quarterback in this draft class is Drake May. I just don't see it. Uh, he might have upside, he might have the arm, and he might have the size, but we've seen multiple quarterbacks like that fail. And not only that, I mean, his body of work in big games is not – that impressive. So, again, I'll stand behind it. The quarterback that shocks everybody is going to be Drake May in just a couple of weeks when he falls potentially out of the first round. I think he falls definitely out of the top ten. You see, the uh, the first top ten, you know, maybe we could have a little fun with. The Where I got to stop you is, like me and Gabe were just saying, there's that run there at 11, 12, 13 of teams that need quarterbacks that aren't maybe don't want to jump up and get them, that if May ever fell to them, Minnesota, Denver, and the Raiders, you would think, Joe, that one of them is going to take him. That would that would be like the, the other side of the coin, I'll say to you there. Even if he falls out of 10, I don't think he gets through that little area of the block, as Gabe was saying, where all those teams are very quarterback needy. No, it's possible. But again, we've seen guys that have this size just fail in the NFL mm-hmm. Time and time again, I mean, Carver, just look at the last couple of years, right? It it took Baker Mayfield how many teams before, you know, he really came into his own in terms of last year, and that's not a knock on Baker. It's just like, look at where he was taken. Paxton Lynch, I mean, couldn't even cut it in the UFL and the XFL. I mean, so, you know, to hear about the size and the the intangibles and know that he didn't step up on on a big stage in the biggest games of the season is the main reason why. I wouldn't be back in Drake May. And then when you hear the experts say, well, he needs a year or two to sit, why would you take and roll the dice on that guy as a first-round talent? Uh, Just his footwork is terrible. Everything is terrible. So that's the type of guy you want to bank on in terms of a top-ten pick? Mm. We shall see, Joe. Two weeks from tomorrow, the first round of the NFL draft. Uh, Joe is – uh, getting all of his work done. Uh, he's got all the the books, the computers. He's got everything all set up. The war room at the Leesy residence uh, to to plan out 
the NFL draft. You know it's true, Joe. Uh, you uh, know that you get very excited. Going to be live stuff. on the network, maybe. Going to be live on the network. I'm, I'm sure you will. You never I'm know. I'm sure that you will. Um, here's what's going on with uh, the baseball. The Twins did beat the Dodgers. Dodgers had a man on in the ninth, but weren't able to get him across. So 3-2, Minnesota gets the win there. Philly's still up 4-2 on the Cardinals. They go to the eighth in St. Louis. The Mariners have just pushed across the run, Joe. They lead the Jays 1-0 in the top of the third in Toronto. And the Diamondbacks just got a homer from Blaze Alexander. Who? Uh, to take a 2-1 lead on the Rockies in the top of the second inning in Colorado. Uh, we mentioned already that the Nats and the Giants are going to start momentarily. I did not, Joe, give you the Rays and the Angels that will start uh, in about 20 minutes as well at the top of the hour in Anaheim, uh, where you're going to get Zach Littell and Soriano as the starters. Uh, Rays minus a buck 20 here. Even money for the Angels. Flat nine the total, Joe, uh, here. Big total uh, for tonight. But I believe uh, they have gotten over it the last two nights, Joe. Uh, mm. Not the first night. Seven, I forget what it was the first night. I think it was probably eight and a half, and they only got eight. But last night, Joe, ten runs to get them over that total. Uh, so final game, Rays and Angels coming up in a few. Yeah, I like the Rays, Carver. I think the Rays are the side, and maybe we get over that eight and a half, nine tonight. But, you know, I would take the Rays. I think they're the more complete team. I think they step up today. You think they step up today? I do. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, okay, all right. So there's your uh, afternoon games. I'm going to give you tonight as well. But first, a uh, f- couple things. The Yankees beat the Marlins 3-2. Uh, so the Yankees continue their hot start. They're 10-2 and two now on the year. The Marlins are having an awful time uh, here at the beginning of the season. They are 1-11 and 11 now, Joe. And so Joe is going to play the Marlins on the bounce back this weekend uh, against the Atlanta Braves at home. That's Joe's had this zeroed in Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Marlins, Braves, uh, Joe's lining it up uh, for them. Put it with right, the Joe? golf. Put it with the golf. You could yes. put it with the golf. Oh, make sure you put it with someone. Make sure you put it with someone who's two hundred to one, though, because if you take it with someone with the chalk, we're gonna have to yell at you like you did to me. So make sure you put it with someone who's two hundred to one. Don't take somebody chalk. I'll tell you what, this guy will not be within forty to one that I put it with. All right. Okay, so forty to one's okay. I told you I had three or four guys at forty to one. That was no good. When I told you that. Well, that's okay, but you told me you put everything with Scheffler. He's the favorite. Not everything. You're not. You're not. You're not paying. You're not picking up uh, what we're saying, Joe. We have the plays have been in. Today is we'll throw some homers with Scheffler as a safety net uh, for Sunday if he happens to win the thing. That's what that is, Joe. Safety net. Safety. Uh, with safety. You can't lose. He's not too far. He's not the he's main too far play. Ahead. It's the it's it's the safety net for if things go really bad. Uh, Just at in Augusta case. This weekend. Insurance. Just in case. Uh, Braves did beat the Mets 6-5 last night. Uh, Cubs beat the Padres, Joe. I believe you said dead under for the Cubs and the Padres last night, and that's precisely what you got. And the A's, who were heavy dogs in Arlington, uh, got a, three home runs from Shea Langliers to get a 4-3 win against the Rangers. So nice job by them. Let's get to tonight. And I want to start in Cleveland because you've already made some strong statements about this game. We have Fetty and BB going in this one. Guardians minus 250, plus two bills for the White Sox, and a seven and a half total here, Joe. You've had this one circled. Yeah, I'm going with the White Sox. They got the victory last night. They jumped out. It was 5 5, and then they pulled away 7 to 5. You're still getting value. I told you it's a buy on spot for the White Sox. Started slow, but I think they match up well with the Guardians. Give me them to bounce back again in another victory outright. And I think we lean to the over as well. I'll lean to the over with you, Joe. I will not be. uh, The White Sox have now, uh, they're in that pot of teams that I'm not playing uh, ever. Uh, The White Sox are in that. that. Were you shocked that I was right last night? Uh, No, I mean, look, it's baseball. They're not going to lose all 162 games, but trying to play them on a daily basis. It's just not something that I'm going to be doing. I'm, I'm not following yeah, but you're the making it sound. Around. You're making it sound like Jim Tomey, uh, Kenny Lofton, and uh, Joey Bell, Albert Bell are walking out there for the Guardians. I mean, come on. Uh, you know, uh, come on. Better than, pretty much everyone's better than the White Sox this year, Joe. Pretty much everyone's better than them. The Yankees will go, go for the sweep 
against the Marlins in the Bronx. Uh, Marcus Stroman against uh, Ryan Weathers, minus 225 for the Yankees, plus 180 for the Marlins, and another eight and a half. Uh, what do we had, Joe? Dead unders the last two nights, right? With the Yankees and the yeah. Marlins, dead unders. Yeah, probably again, but I, I still lean to the Yankees. Again, I don't want any piece of the Marlins. I just think it's a bad matchup. But again, willing to back the Marlins over the weekend, not here. Give me the Yanks and the under, reluctantly. Reluctantly taking the Yanks and the under. I'll lay the run and a half again uh, with the He's Yankees. He's going to lay it. Uh, there tonight. We're going to lay it. We'll lay, lay it. the run and a half. Uh, it worked on Monday night. Didn't work last night. Uh, we'll try to uh, push it across the line here this evening. The Cubs finish off the series in San Diego against the Padres. Kyle Hendricks and Dylan Cease. The starters tonight, Padres minus 150, Cubbies plus a buck 25, flat eight the total here. I like the Cubbies, Joe, uh, to take the series here uh, tonight. I like uh, I like the Cubs a little bit, too. I, again, that number suggests under to me. So I think, again, we go dead under. So they where'd they got 17 runs uh, game one. And then tonight, yeah, another under like last night. So I'll, I'll lean Cubs, but I like the under. As long as the Cubs win, it can go wherever you want it to go, Joe. If you wanted to go under, we could we could keep it under as long as the Cubbies win. Uh, the Brewers are in Cincinnati again. Both of these games have been dead overs the last couple of nights. Hunter Green and Wade Miley, the starters here, minus 130 for the Reds, plus a buck ten for the Brewers, down to eight and a half. So riddle me this, Joe. I mean, we've had uh, you know way over both nights, and now uh, we get dropped down to eight and a half. What are we looking at here? I like the Brew Crew. I told you last night. Give me Brew Crew and the over. I think eight and a half, we take a it's shot. It's over. Don't Gotta buy the line here, movement. Joe. Don't buy the line movement. They're trying to suck us in. Don't buy the line movement, Joe says. Do not well, buy the It opened the at nine. Movement. It's down to eight and a half. So they're trying to down suck to us in on the under. Brew Crew and uh, over. <laughs> Brew Crew. I'm on just on the over for me, Joe. Uh, I don't even want to get involved with the side. Uh, the Orioles are in Boston tonight against the Red Sox. Of course, they beat them there yesterday, opening day at Fenway for the Sox, who are out to a good start. Uh, the big news for Baltimore is, Joe, they have called up uh, top prospect Jackson Holiday. He is in the lineup, batting ninth and playing second base tonight. Uh, so Holiday is in there, and Joe, he is plus 630 to hit a home run tonight. It is tater time for Jackson Holiday. You know what, Joe? We'll put it with Scheffler, too. Okay, but we'll, we'll put all the home runs with Sheffler tonight uh, to give ourselves uh, our stack. Cole Irvin and Cutter Crawford are going to be the starters here. Red Sox minus 115, Orioles minus 105, and a flat nine for this one. Mm. Give me the over, and I'm going to take a shot with the Red Sox. They've been a little competitive. They got blown out in the second half after it was, what, 1-1 in like the fourth or fifth? Yeah. And then they extend, extend, you know, the line kind of... Line kind of says on. Red Sox to me uh, here tonight. Uh-oh. So like, why, Uh-oh. That... why are, you know, Orioles, why aren't the Orioles favored here tonight? Why aren't? Because of Irvin, I guess. Irvin kind of stinks. But um, I like the Orioles. I'm not playing a side. Just give me the over nine, Joe. That's all that I'm going for. The all over right. nine tonight uh, in that one. We'll get another one in. The Mets are in Atlanta still against the Braves. Uh, tonight, Joe, we are going to get Jose Quintana against Winans for the Braves, who are minus 160, plus 135 for the Mets, nine and a half, another fat, juicy total in this one. Yeah, I see this clearly. Mets outright, plus the 135, and under the nine and a half. This is this will set up beautifully for the Marlins bet over the weekend. So I need the, I need the Braves to lose here. I'm not. Uh, I'm doing exactly what I did with Milwaukee and Cincinnati here, Joe. Uh, dead overs both nights. I'm going to stay where it is. Dead overs both nights with the Braves and the Mets. We're going to go right back to it. Over the number for them, nine and a half, especially with Quintana and Winans uh, going to be on the mound. All right, I have, Joe, two more for you. We'll do those next uh, before the end of the hour. Of course, next hour we'll start with Cam. We've got Golf Wednesdays here on C to C with the Masters. Teeing off Ooh. tomorrow in Augusta. All right, Pharrell Coast to Coast on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe Lisi for Scotty. We're back. Sports Grid, Sports Grid Radio right after this.
I mean, is it pretty much cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend? I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had the Wolfpack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The fact that I've been able to uh, move to a, a home that I'm very excited about is uh, it, it's, it's really cool. And uh, so far, I just love everybody that I've met at Sports Grid, and I'm just super pumped for the opportunity. Sometimes things that I wouldn't feel comfortable asking, uh, whether it was me playing and just trying to get a ticket on the golf course and certain thing a player might have learned, now I'm getting that information because I, I don't mind asking it. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted, but here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR distance zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Coast to coast here on a Wednesday. Parver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us. Joe, I got two more for you uh, for tonight with uh, the baseball. We have the Astros and the Royals getting together again in Kansas City. Uh, Lugo going for the Royals. Astros minus a buck 20. Even money for Kansas City. Nine and a half. Another fat total for us tonight, Joe, uh, in the baseball. And I kind of like the over on all these nine and a halves. Yeah, I'm with you. I like the over. It's Strohs or bust for me. This is this is a team they should beat up on again. I mean, they've been playing terrible in my opinion, but this is a game that they should be able to take care of business. I, I mean, I like the over, Carver, but maybe we wait, like, you know, we wait an inning or two, see if we can get an eight or a flat seven sometimes so we can bang it out. Uh, maybe, Joe. Uh, it's possible. They uh, started early in that game last night, so I don't know if we'll I be know. able to get that uh, again tonight. And finally, the A's are in Arlington against the Rangers. Uh, Stripling and Bradford, uh, the law firm, is the starters there. Minus 185 for Texas, plus 150 for the A's who beat them last night. Flat nine the total. I'll lay the run and a half with Texas tonight, Joe, simply because uh, I just don't – A, the A's aren't going to beat them two nights in a row, and B – I think tonight, uh, you know, you had Wood going last night. He pitched very well. Uh, I think the Rangers will tee off on Stripling. They'll beat him up. I agree. I agree. I like that over, too. Uh, maybe we should just take all the overs. 
Can I, uh, can maybe I, we can should. Can I be an overnight? Yeah, maybe we should just take. Maybe we should. Ah, uh, it could be. Could be an overnight. Uh, you never know. I think it's an overnight. It could be a real Braves, play. Braves, Braves, Mets, play. Five of them. Brewers, Brewers, Reds, Astros, Royals. Those three for All me. Right. Uh, no I'm doubt in. about it. Uh, with the overs. Uh, Joe, we will see you back uh, in a little bit. It is Golf Wednesdays on Coast to Coast. Cam Stewart is with me next as we get ready for the Masters in Augusta, Georgia. All the picks, the outrights, the top 10s and 20s, the first round leaders, everything next. Hour two on the grid after this. 